Africa. According to the United Nations today, there are 54 countries in Africa. But in reality, whether we agree with their independence or not, there are a de facto number of 56 countries in the continent. The two unrecognized states are Somaliland and West Sahara, both of which are usually known by people. One is fighting for its independence from Morocco and the other from Somalia. But deep inside Africa, further south, there is another attempt at a country that most people don't know about. A territory that wants independence based on historical claims and differences, the country of Amazonia. Okay, full disclaimer, calling it a country is a little bit of a stretch, but they want to be a country, so let's learn why and why they have failed so far. The Federal Republic of Amazonia, also sometimes known as South Cameroon, is an unrecognized breakaway state in West Africa, which claims the northwest region of Cameroon, though it currently controls almost none of the claimed territory. Its most recent declaration of independence was in 2017, but so far no country has formally recognized Amazonia's independence, and it is currently the site of an armed conflict between Amazonian separatist guerrillas and the Cameroonian military, known as the Anglophone Crisis. We'll learn a little more about this further ahead, but it seems the source of the conflict and the desire for independence itself is directly related to the name of the crisis, Anglophone. You see, during colonial times, and until 1961, the region that calls itself Amazonia was a British colony called Southern Cameroon. It's a little confusing that it's called Southern when today they claim a territory in the north of Cameroon, while the rest of Cameroon at the time was a French colony when Europe began decolonizing Africa and the time for independence came, a referendum took place and voters in South Cameroon voted to join Cameroon, the previously French one, as a constituent state of a federal republic. However, they soon came to regret it. Over time, the power of the central government, dominated by francophones, expanded, according to them, at the expense of the region's autonomy. Many inhabitants of Amazonia identify as anglophones and resent what they perceive as discrimination, and efforts to eliminate anglophone legal, administrative, educational, and cultural institutions by the Cameroonian government. The situation lasted for over 50 years until, in 2016, a large-scale protest was met with a violent government response, escalating the situation. In 2017, a local group unilaterally declared independence as the Federal Republic of Amazonia. The name is very similar to Amazonia, as in the forest and river in South America, but it's completely unrelated. The term Amazonia is derived from the word Amboses, the local name for the bay at the mouth of the woody river known in English as Ambas Bay. The name itself is proof of how over those 50 years since 1961, they struggled to maintain their Anglophone heritage. The name was coined in 1984 as part of a campaign for restoration of autonomy and preservation of Anglophone institutions in the region. Amazonia is more usually associated with the separatist or independence-seeking faction, while the Cameroonian government and other official sources such as the UN continue to refer to it as the Northwest Region or Southern Cameroon. Despite the latest declaration of independence being from 2017, the flag was adopted as early as 1999 by the Southern Cameroon National Council, an institution that has fought for the region's independence since 1995. They are, however, a non-violent group, and I'm not sure if they align with the other separatist factions. The flag is similar to the nearby nation of Liberia, which in turn takes direct inspiration from the flag of the United States. It presents nine horizontal stripes of alternating white and light blue, with the dove surrounded by 13 gold stars on a blue field in the top left canton. There is no historical meaning or origin for the flag's colors and symbols, merely the ones that this council chose to attribute to them upon designing it. Blue stands for democracy, white for transparency, the dove for the principles of God and peace, and the 13 stars, the 13 counties of Amazonia. Throughout time, this region had various flags to represent it, from the colonial flags of the British Ambas Bay Protectorate, the German Cameroon, British Cameroon, and then the Federal Republic of Cameroon itself, which at first actually flew this flag with two stars to represent French and British Cameroon, then changing it to one star in 1972. Perhaps a symbol that some of their complaints might be true, and that their different nature has grown to be ignored by the central government, leading to this conflict. 
Now, before we keep going, a quick message from today's sponsor, Masterworks. By now, we've studied the economies of countries all over the world, and we know some events transcend time and location. In the last few years alone, we've seen some old villains resurface. Pandemics, wars, inflation, market crashes. It's like a terrifying crossover episode. Times like these are confusing and scary, but we can try to weather the storm with a few lessons from the past. In a previous video, I talked about precious metals and how gold became a popular store of wealth as a commodity, a physical asset, which can retain or gain value, even in times of economic downturn. But there's another asset that has been historically valued due to similar factors, fine art. You probably know that rich people have collected art for centuries. It's not just a decoration, but an interesting investment. In fact, the last time inflation was near its current levels between 1973 and 81, art prices appreciated at an average rate of 17.5% per year. Until recently, only the very very rich investors have been able to invest in art, but thanks to Masterworks, almost anyone can invest without buying an entire million dollar painting. I can't stress this enough, this isn't an NFT, this is a real museum quality art. By legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy, Masterworks buys the paintings up front, qualifies them with the SEC, allowing investors like you and I to invest in shares of a painting. In their last nine exits, Masterworks has delivered net returns over 13.9% to their investors. Nearly 600,000 people have signed up so far and offerings have sold out quickly so there's a waitlist, but my subscribers can gain priority access and skip it through the link in the description. Now, back to the video. So now let's quickly summarize the conflict itself. The separatist military forces are poorly equipped and outnumbered. Wikipedia estimates a max of 4,000 fighters over time against at least 12,000 soldiers of Cameroon. It doesn't help that the Amazonian forces are made up of several separate factions, which also fight among themselves. For instance, one of them declared a unilateral ceasefire in 2020 due to the public health crisis, but it was ignored by the others and by the Cameroon government itself. The internal conflict is therefore essentially a guerrilla one, which remains up to today. However, not very successfully for the Amazonians, as they only control some remote rural areas with all urban areas having been held or retaken by Cameroon. So now that we've understood what Amazonia is, why they are different from the rest of Cameroon, why they declared independence, although not succeeding so far, and therefore answered the key questions for this topic, let's look further into it and provide a bigger historical context for the region, which I believe will allow us to better understand the summarized answers that I just presented. The Ambas Bay, from which the self-proclaimed country's name derives, began being visited by various European nations at the start of the colonial period. The first to arrive were the Portuguese in 1470, but as usual they didn't stick around. And the first permanent settlement was by a British missionary in 1858, named after Queen Victoria, now Limbe in Cameroon, but which the Amazonians want to rename to Victoria, again evidence of their desired reconnection with the Anglophone culture. Meanwhile, the Germans established large trading centers nearby, to the southeast of the Wuri River. The British and German Empire were fighting over control of the area, rushing to make alliances with the locals, and even breaking out into full conflict in the Douala War of 1884. In this war, Germany assisted local allies and helped them achieve victory, therefore cementing their colonial influence in Cameroon. By 1887, the British abandoned their claims on the region, and it took a while, but by 1914, the territory of Amazonia was fully under German control as a part of German Cameroon. After losing World War I, Germany lost all of its colonies and Cameroon was split between the French and the British who had invaded and conquered the territory during the conflict. The French took the most part of the land while the British were left with what is today Amazonia, northern or southern Cameroon, administered at the time along with the British colony of Nigeria apparently gaining some autonomy. In 1961, with the UN pressuring European powers to move forward with decolonization, a resolution was put forth calling on Britain to organize a referendum based on the following two alternatives, join Nigeria or join Cameroon. Two reports by English economists both concluded that Southern Cameroon would not be able to continue to finance development and growth as an independent state. So it seems the context didn't really favor people to have an option for independence. And while many Amazonians resented the lack of this option, the disappointment with the Nigerian administration led to hope that a more equal federation could be had with Cameroon, 
with this option winning the vote. And so they joined the previously French territory, with one critical concession being the requirement that laws applying to both states could only be adopted to a vote by both regions' representatives. A federation of both Cameroons was created, and a flag with the two stars, each representing each state, was adopted. Right after this, a first internal conflict took place between the ruling government supported by the French and Marxist revolutionaries. The war allowed the government to ban the opposition and establish a one-party state. They then moved to reduce local autonomy, claiming it was too expensive and the cause of the country's poverty. A referendum on a new constitution took place, replacing the federation with a unitary state, changing the name from Federal Republic of Cameroon to the United Republic of Cameroon, also changing the flag to have only one star. It won with 99.99% of the votes, a little suspicious to say the least. Amazonians say the referendum was invalid and that even if it was, the constitution would still need to be approved by both states' representatives, as was established in that early requirement, something that didn't happen. Discontent with the central government then grew and the Amazonians struggled with the fact that everything in the state was ruled by francophone leaders. Their reduced autonomy and poor development led to early calls for independence since 1985. In 1990, opposition political parties were once again legalized and John Nku Foncha, the leading Anglophone in Cameroon's government, resigned from the governing party and wrote about his dissatisfaction with the central government's attitude towards the Anglophone regions. The Southern Cameroonians, Amazonians, whom I brought into the Union have been ridiculed and referred to as traitors and enemies and the constitutional provisions which protected this local minority have been suppressed, their voices drowned, while the rule of the gun has replaced dialogue. After this, more and more of the Anglophone population began calling for the restoration of a federal system that would restore their autonomy, but the central government seems to have fully refused this. Increasing pressure for autonomy or independence reduced trust and engagement between the government and the Anglophone minority. By 2017, the Cameroon government had only one Anglophone among 36 ministers. In November of 2016, a number of large protests and strikes were organized initially by Anglophone lawyers, students and teachers focused on the growing marginalization of English and Anglophone institutions to which the central government responded aggressively. Because of this response and lack of dialogue, the leading Amazonian nationalist movements joined together and declared independence. This was in 2017. Cameroons refused and increased their repression further against these movements and a new internal conflict began between the Anglophone separatists and the Francophone regime of Cameroon. Today, Amazonia doesn't really exist per se. The territory is there, its population is mostly Anglophone people, many of which are perhaps still discontent with the central government and their lack of autonomy, plus the suppression of their culture and local institutions. However, the organization or lack of organization by the Amazonian separatist leaders, as well as their lack of resources and military inferiority when compared to the Cameroonian army, has led to, so far, a failure in establishing this new state. Most of Amazonia's urban centers are controlled by Cameroon, and only remote rural areas are effectively controlled by the rebels. While it may be the desire of locals to regain autonomy and even independence, it seems that, at least for now, Amazonia will remain an unknown country in Africa because, in fact, it has not yet succeeded in being able to conquer its independence, be it diplomatically or militarily, and become a de facto country of their own. So, that is the African country nobody knows about, where it is, what it's called, why it wants to be independent, and why that independence may or may not make sense, as well as why they failed to achieve it so far. What do you think? Should Amazonia be independent? And are there any other situations like this in Africa or anywhere in the world? Let me know in the comments, along with any corrections or additional information you may have about this. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.